Get your decade ahead horoscope now at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous superstar Scorpio. Welcome to your horoscope for the month of July 2019, looking at life and love. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing month it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out right now. And it is this month that is all about the eclipses. Now, the first eclipse that takes place right around the third of the month, well, this is happening in fellow water sign Cancer. You'll be able to make the most of this energy more than the other signs out there. And you'll be able to tap into some of its more magical qualities that much easier. So what makes it magical? Well, it is going to be this solar eclipse supremely harmoniously aligned with Neptune. Now, this is an energy of inspiration, of creativity, and even, we can say, there's a sense of a almost magical energy that is helping you to create momentum to move forward. Now, it is this solar eclipse taking place in a part of the sky for you that has to do with understanding your place in the world. So whether that is the philosophies, that guide your life, the beliefs that you have. Another part of this has to do with uh, more mundane matters like long distance travel, immigration, citizenship, higher learning, and legal matters. Any trip that you would take right about now will likely be a deeply meaningful spiritual experience for you. If it is that you are thinking about relocating in any way, well, this is where the universe will start to point signs very clearly as to where that could be for you. And positive developments on those fronts are possible for you as well, where it comes to immigration and citizenship. But legal matters are focused at this time, higher education. Now, there is one thing to be mindful of with this eclipse. It is standing across the sky from Saturn. And what that suggests is a need to be practical, to understand what the requirements are, what the regulations are. And as long as you're doing that, then you start tapping into the best that the sky has to offer. However, keep in mind that Saturn is moving through a part of the sky that has to do with information, the exchange of information. And as part of that, it has to do with agreements and contracts and documents as well. Given that we are going to have Mercury retrograde this month as well, while all of that does suggest that it isn't necessarily the case that all the information you get is accurate, and it is possible that you receive some information around this eclipse that might feel like a little bit of a downer, okay, to put it mildly, or to put it one way. Um, Just again, information can be incorrect under this sky. Part of that Mercury retrograde is happening in the same part of the sky that we have this eclipse. However, a day after the eclipse, Venus moves into this part of the sky as well. Your heart will know what it is to do, where it is that you need to go, and what it is that may not be so clear right away, or you think it is, but you don't realize it's not, will all will be cleared up as we head into August. So it may not be the time to sign contracts, uh, solidify plans on that level. However, if you already have something planned, go for it. And if it is that you are feeling inspiration to return to some prospect, uh, something that's been ongoing or something that you were part of once before, but you left behind related to these areas that I mentioned, well, that is where you have the most possibility to truly experience a breakthrough that delights you and creates positive momentum long after this month is over. Now, as we navigate to the middle of the month, right around the 18th is when we are going to have this month's lunar eclipse. Now, this lunar eclipse is an intense one, and so it will be strangely comfortable for you. It is happening hand in hand with Saturn, the South Node, and Pluto close by as well. Now, these energies, along with this lunar eclipse, right, this can be uh, quite an emotional roller coaster. It can be uh, very powerful, all encompassing, even. But we have a harmonious connection to Neptune happening to this lunar eclipse as well. And what that suggests is that there is a sense now with this that you understand what action you can take and how it is that you can make things go in a way favorable to you. A lot of that will come down to asking questions 
and trusting yourself, trusting your heart can go a very long way under this sky. And so this lunar eclipse is happening in a part of the sky that has to do with some of the things I just mentioned, like documents, communication of all kinds, um, whether that is like in writing or email or digital or phone, uh, running into people randomly, having conversations like that. It has to do with learning. And the people who are covered here are siblings, cousins, and neighbors. So it is possible that uh, communication, talking to people, or even just in writing, it can feel uh, quite consequential. It can feel kind of heavy as well. And so where possible, if at all possible, if there are really important uh, conversations that need to happen, I would invite you to maybe not plan for it around this eclipse if you can help it. Uh, if it is that you are involved in media in any way or uh, looking to court the media in order to actually promote whatever it is that you do, you also want to be a little bit mindful with this energy. Um, it may end up actually asking a lot of you, a lot of energy, a lot of presence, a lot of attention. But the thing is that given how karmic this energy is, and what I mean by that is it's almost like this moment, it's time has come. And there's a part of you that is embracing it fully. It's when we set up these really mountainous expectations for what a conversation is gonna lead us to, what if we talk to the right person and how that's gonna end up being, what steps that's actually gonna take and how Things can go forward from there, beyond and up until the sky, till we reach the moon. All of that is beautiful. It's great to have hope. Um, but there seems to be such an intense focus on a particular outcome, some power move that you're really trying to make, when a better way to do it is actually to just be in the moment as much as you can, to ride with the flow, go with the flow, and see where it is that it wants to take you and learn about yourself in the process. That ultimately can help you most to then take whatever opportunity comes up, whatever conversation comes up, whatever messages come through, to use them to your advantage that much more. When you are in the moment, you are in a place of power. As I said, siblings, cousins, and neighbors are covered in this part of the sky. There might be some developments around these people, and there might be heightened emotions with these people at this time as well. So again, it's a good idea. This isn't necessarily the time to plan an important conversation, but it is a time to surrender, to be open, and see where it is and whom it is presents itself to you. Where it comes to matters of love, it is the day after that first solar eclipse that we are going to have Venus move into the same part of the sky, fellow water sign Cancer. You'll be able to tap into this energy that much more to your advantage because Venus is in your element at this time and for most of the month at that. This is a part of the sky that has to do with the international love or through love, through attraction, feeling like you know more than you did before, more of the world, more ideas. It encourages you to see the world differently as well. If you're open to meeting someone new, yes, connections can happen at this time, meaningful connections at that. But remember, we're in a Mercury retrograde season. Part of that Mercury retrograde season is going to be spent with Mercury also moving through the sign of Cancer, as well as dividing its time between Cancer and Leo as well. So what that means is, again, this might not be the time for like really big consequential decisions, really important agreements to be had. However, if you're just open to meeting new people, well, this can be a time when you do connect with somebody and you're able to understand more of what you truly believe and how you see the world and how now you can see the world differently as a result of the attraction you feel. For those of you who are just getting to know someone, this is going to be some interesting insights into this person's worldview, and it's either going to expand your horizons or it's going to make you feel like, okay, maybe uh, you are more interested in someone who thinks more like you. These are some scenarios that become possible. And for those of you in an established bond, this energy becomes all about the adventure, doing something fun together, being open to the world together. And as part of that, you may either plan or undertake uh, whether it is travel or some other type of new experience that helps to raise the level of enthusiasm the two of you share. What I love about this month for you 
there is so much here, right? But I will say the eclipses, it really is the eclipses that are the shining star. That first eclipse in the early part of the month is allowing you to feel that sense of doorways open, opportunities finding you. This is supremely harmoniously aspected to you. And it does mean that in some way you are about to expand your horizons. In some way, you are about to realize that the world truly is your oyster. Well, thank you so much for watching. You can get a video like this every week by logging on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. It'll be a great month. Enjoy.